welcome people from hey. the to Metalarium pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about the band, this last la this last album, Apotheosis, and more things related to the metal world. Right, starting with a common question: Well, how how you been the band during this last five well, four years? Because you released your last album, Towers of Our Impending Doom, in 2019, and now you are releasing the new album. So, how are you, how 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 was the band been during these four years? Uh, we, we try to, to make a new release uh, every year. That's uh, li like how we work. Um, we, we, um, we enjoy working in a rehearsal room, creating new material. So it, it usually ends up we have a release every once a year. Okay, okay. So well, I, 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 I've been hearing a lot of this apotheosis and it's a great piece because I love the sound of very raw, very, very strong, very, I don't know how, but it's, it's very a strong release. So in this aspect, oh, what, what kind of, oh, what are the difference, what are the main difference that exists already with this last album with the previous one? Mm, I, I think uh, the development is uh, like a national development for us. Uh, focusing on different things and then uh, this one we recorded in our, our home studio so it's a, it's a bit different in that way mm. okay 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 but i've been i've been listening this a lot but I mean, i've been asking at this aspect talking about the history in general from Denmark. i've in the nineties Denmark doesn't have a lot of bands to work to release on new albums or albums, EPs, etc. But as uh, since 2010, I remember Denmark are very growing with new bands, Undergang, uh, Beast, uh, The Inquisitor, uh, Hyperdontia, a lot of bands more. So now, how is the situation talking about the death metal in general in Denmark compared to the 90s, especially? Well, uh... It's like uh, our, our good friend David from Undergang. He has a lot to do with this. Uh, he's like uh, uh, one of the driving forces in the Danish metal scene in uh, at Chile, in, in fact. And uh, it's like uh, it, it woke up again, the death metal scene. It's been like dormant for a lot of years. So then uh, David w was one of the, the persons who, who helped it to wake up again. And a lot of bands came along. And you know, he. He helped create Kill Town, Death Fest, and stuff. So he put Denmark on the map once again with death metal, like the king did in the 80s with the Versal Fate and stuff like that. So David is really, really the driving force, as Thomas said, behind the, the movement that is Danish death metal at the moment, where it's an international sort of recognized thing. Mm. Yeah, 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 that's true, that's true. Because I think Henrik is one well, of the drummer. Is now is from the eight from the from the nineties because sometimes he plays with Dominus, so it's a great band from the. You know, so, what is your opinion about he Henrik about this about this revival? Because the Tess are re released new album last year. No, no, sorry, uh, two years ago, Maceration released a new album last year, and uh, Emancipation Production are releasing when well, I re-release or re re, -re, -re -did the old albums from 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 Dingmar, Curse Vomit. And a lot of bands more. Yeah. I'm not sure what the question is. So what is your opinion about now the old bands from the 90s, especially, are returning with the new albums? Maceration? Oh, I think it's great. I think it's great they have a, a revival again. Uh, it's... It's people who have been for a long time in the metal world. So if they have something to say with the music, they should do something and some do it like maceration. I think it's cool. So um, perhaps with this new revival, uh, perhaps do you have the opportunity to talk with, well, to talk with the people from Dominus to revival a new era from Dominus death metal era because it's possible now. Uh, no, uh, Domino's is world beat now, and I don't want to talk about that. It's fucking shit. Yeah, well, that, that's no. Perhaps the old members reunite and do a different way. Uh, yeah, we. I played in Wolf Flare with Morden from uh, Domino's. We split up at that time, 
and that has a, a, a cause. We, we were different and um, I don't want anything with the past to do. I'm here right now, I'm playing the Inquisitor and um, I just want to move forward. Okay, well, all three are, are releasing this new album and what? Well, I, I I I hear a lot now from Dingmar. Do you think that do you think that the new this new era of death metal bands in Denmark has a personal sound with Underground, the Inquisitor, this kind of as because in the nineties Dingmar doesn't have a personal sound with the old bands, but now are are more 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 bands are into this style, and perhaps do you feel this sensation that you feel in the from this like the Swedish. Finland, Brazil, Netherlands, etc., etc. I think uh, it's like uh, in, in Denmark, uh, like uh, a country of, of, of several islands, and the island Shelland, where we come from, we have a lot in common. Uh, our, our our views on metal, the the ones from Jutland has a different uh, view on on metal, and their style is different than ours. So I think uh, the band from Shelland, uh, we, we know each other and we are friends and uh, we inspire each other. And the bands from Yuland uh, ha have the same way with other bands from there. Hmm. Okay, now talking about now related more things about the, the Inquisitor. So in this aspect, the band is this year, this this year accomplished 10 years of existing because the bands are created in 2013, now are 2023. So, 10, 10 years of existence of the Kister, you have four albums. So since the beginning to now, how do you how do you see the band? Now, what how how are how is your accomplice, your anecdotes, and a big anecdote that the band has for on this town 10, 10, 10, 10 years? We I think we, we keep on developing our, our music. It's, there's a lot of difference from our first release to, to the new one apotheosis. So it's, I think it's it's a natural development development so but uh, Henrik and I has, have uh, been playing together since uh, the early 90s, 90s in, in other bands and project bands so so we're, before starting the Inquisitor we, we were playing black metal in a band called Bloodfest I don't know if you heard about yeah. it yeah then uh, when Bloodfest is split up we, we wanted to, to go back to our roots in death metal and then we formed the Inquisitor Okay, so and in this aspect, how do you describe the music from the Inquisitor and this new Alpotiosis? Because for me, it's very, it's very arcane, very, very raw, very stronger. But for the, for perhaps you have other, other words that achieve very well this new album. I think uh, we're just uh, inspired by, by all our, our old, uh, the old, old bands from the, the early nineties. Uh, that's uh, how the feeling we're trying to create, the feeling they, they created back then. It's a more uh, sincere feeling, a more sincere approach to death metal. Uh, a lot of new metal is very overproduced and uh, they, they manipulate the, the instruments a lot. We are, we are playing a more like live in the studio. And also, what you see very common, excuse me. <coughs> What you see very commonly nowadays is that people will release like one demo and then they will make uh, 10,000 t-shirts and then they are banned. Where we, we don't do that. We just, we meet up twice a week to play our music, to make new songs. We're always moving forward. We always have something to say with our music. And that's a very big difference between Dyke Christian and a lot of bands is we actually just want to make music. We don't care about playing live and stuff like that is secondary. What matters is rehearsing, jamming, and being together and creating something. That's the important part and what's different from a lot of bands, I think, personally. Mm. Okay, it's in, in, with this aspect, how do you how do you divide the composition process for this new album? Who is in charge of all composition or perhaps in during the rehearsal in the rehearsal studio, you are composing the the tree, the the, the, the old songs from this new apotheosis. Uh, the usual style we go for is that uh, a like has a drum patterns, which he puts together has a rough version of what he would like, and then uh, Thomas makes some guitar riffs to that, and I'll make some bass parts, and then uh, 
we put on some lyrics at some later yeah. point. Yeah, all all three of us make lyrics as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it starts with the drums, because drums are back the backbone of any kind of music. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, talking about the subject of living influence and feeling what happens internally and externally for the musicians. Uh, many musicians say that they, they don't have a direction uh, when writing music and are carried away by the feelings that they have in that moment when create the album or the song, etc., etc. So for you, how does the parts of the producing an album connect with the idea or the sensation of it? So could we say that the music is a constant thinking and not thinking? I think it, it comes natural for us. It, it's, uh, we don't think so much about uh, uh, how, how we want it to be. We just make the music and then, then uh, it's a national progress. We also, we are very good at uh, like criticizing ourselves. Like, oh, maybe this part is too long in a song. Like, cut it down. Maybe this part doesn't work at all. After four months of rehearsing, we can scrap something if we don't like it. But it happens. It's not. It's not planned. It's just what we feel and we record everything, every rehearsal is recorded. So we can always listen back and like, you know, oh, this part sounded good at rehearsal and we were everybody liking it. But afterwards listening to it, it may be not be so good and we will cut it. So we're very dynamic and fluent in the way we make music in general. And it's very off the moment, I think. Hmm. Okay, well, relating to this, and, and when we are living in a world that now the junior generation talking about people of 35, uh, 35 years, 20 years, or 30 years, these new people wants to, well, wants to hear the music with one single, two singles, three singles. We are returning in a cyclic time for the 40s and 50s, when the music just spread by singles at that time. And now we are living this aspect now again. So for you, which, which songs capture the whole essence for this new apotheosis? Mm, I don't don't think any of them. I think they're very different. All, all of the songs. But, but I think there's a between the EP Humanoid and the new album. There's a song of that name, which sort of where the themes ties together. And it's, again, if you listen to the EP and the new album after one another, you will hear the natural progression of us as musicians in general. So. Yeah. I, I think it's just, it ties together in that way that it sounds like a natural movement forward for, for a band. We haven't changed style, we just we still play death metal, but it's definitely new music. It's not repeating the same thing as before. So I don't think there is like a, one song, as Thomas said, but it's just the, the album is a natural progression of where Thy Crystal is going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what's your opinion about now the bueno the digital aspects now? Because as you as you know, there's Spotify, Tidal, YouTube Music, these kind of aspects to spread the music much better around the world. But according some from from some artists, this is not the way to hear music. You need to hear the way by the physical stuff, CD, vinyl, tape, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and what's your opinion about the digital aspect? Is good or is bad for the music? It's good, clearly, yeah, because. Yeah, yeah. There's more ways for people to listen. If you want to listen to vinyl exclusively like we do, then good. Go ahead and do that. If you want to only listen to Spotify, fine. Listen to Spotify. Whatever works for whatever person is fine. As long as they listen to music, and especially Daikwista, then uh, they're okay with me. I don't, I don't care about the format for, for, the, for other people. For me personally, it's vinyl and tape. That's fun for me. But I listen to when I go on the train to go to the rehearsal room, I listen to Spotify. Mm. So for, for me personally, it doesn't, I don't give a fuck. People can, as long as they listen to music and discover new music, I don't care about where they do it. They can even download it for free. I don't give a fuck. Mm. Okay. I think uh, the digi digital uh, platforms are good for people that are just curious about a band and they not necessarily want to buy a record at, at first. Then they, they can check out the band and then if they're interested, I, I rely on the, the buy the vinyl or the CD or something. But uh, Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so, uh, the next question will be, Anna, 
and a very astral way to, to see and uh, to, to understand this new apotheosis. Because perhaps do you hear about the uh the synesthesia matter? What? Synesthesia. Well, if you don't know, I will explain. The synesthesia matter is when the people, uh, when they, they hear the music, see colors, smell taste, uh, or uh, smell the flavors, this kind of aspect, when they hear the music. So, uh, as I said in uh, two or three times, for me, the album is uh, like some visceral stuff. Like, I, I, I smell organs, I smell blood into there. So, this kind of aspect. If we try to relate this aspect, what a sensation that in the synesthesia aspect, what kind of feelings, what kind of odors feel is colors, odors, and smells that the listeners will find into this apotheosis for you? I, I think uh, when I uh, compose music, I have a lot of like a post apocalyptic visions for my eyes. So uh, if you should add, add some kind of smell or something, it's a uh, the smell of burning houses and uh, <laughs> the smell of death and destruction. <laughs> oh. The smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, well, we are very close to this interview, guys. And for this, what are the future plans that the band has for this new album? Well, you told me that you don't want, you are not a, plan, a, a band that play live much tomorrow, but, but has with this... Well, these four albums and with a lot of reviews, a lot of good reviews that I saw for this new one. So perhaps you are more, you are more proposal to do a more videos, perhaps a European tour, perhaps a North American tour. Who knows? Or perhaps in a, in a, in the near future, a, a Latin American tour. Who knows? Yeah, uh, we have uh, David has put on a festival on Earth Mobility here in Copenhagen in June, I think, start of June. We, we are playing that and we have a few shows in Germany as well. Yeah, three shows. Uh, but other than that, we don't, don't have any shows planned, but uh, we have a uh, split in the works. We've yeah. just recorded uh, four tracks for uh, a split with Galvanizer. Okay. The boys from Prunland. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah, know them. Yeah, we are, we are in, I think that that's about it. Actually. We're in the process right now. Uh, planning on doing it ourselves, the mixing, and uh, see how that. No. And... Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. 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 Well, the, uh, the, I I lost it for a few seconds about the connection. Well, this, this is very low here, but well, continue with this. Uh, yeah. Continue with this. Continue with this interview. I want we one of the few one one of the last questions. What is your opinion about now the artificial intelligence are now pre are now more present into the music and to the art now because as you can see now around the world well, uh, in the in the media when in the in, in, in internet there is already exists a uh, a software that create art when you put a little descriptions in the box and this software create art with your descriptions so what is your opinion about the artificial intelligence are now present now more present into the arts with the with the cover art with the drum machines bass machines uh, guitar machines etc one person can create now just music, now with like the 80s or 90s, we need more more musicians to create music. Now it's with one person, it's possible. And I think no person is not necessary to now with the artificial intelligence to create music. Well, I, th I think it's okay. If, if the, this person has, has uh, something to say and have some uh, original ideas, it, it doesn't matter how it's created. It's the, the ideas that counts. It's the original ideas. It's yeah, I think it's fine. As you said, people are using so it's still people using AI to do stuff. And as long as you if you release an album uh, made by AI, you you will put it in the title anyway. So you're not gonna be like conned into buying fake music. People will be interested, and people will still be interested in music made by people it's just going to be a new genre of stuff to do people who program ai to record music so in the short term it's very exciting for 
AI is exciting in general, what we can use it for in, in the future. And if some people want to spend that, that time making it do music, then go ahead and do it. Let me hear it. Is this cool death metal? I'll buy it. Probably, maybe. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, well, guys, the sad times arrive at this interview. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one like me doing this one. But congratulations for this new apotheosis. It's a great one. I did my pre-order from Extremely Rotten Reflex. It's a great album. I, I have I have with this with Espero. I hope I hope this is the last album arrives soon because I hope all four albums for you and CD. I love the, your music. Perhaps do you want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metalidium followers? Uh, th thanks for supporting us. Uh, thanks for listening to our music. And uh, if you, uh, you have the opportunity, come and see us live. It's a totally different ex experience. And uh, no matter what format you'd like to listen, uh, if you download our music, thank you anyway. Thank you for supporting the Danish metal scene. We are small as country and we appreciate everything we get from everyone. So thank you and thank you for the interview.